This again is another Blind Guardian round, a very important Blind Guardian round about a night at the opera. We have a very nice guest again, Charlie, welcome. Hi. You may have to say something about the album. I may have to say something. I think it's a it's really brilliant. I I I mean this is it did cost a lot of work. Or, you know, a lot of work went into it and a lot of creativity and it just took a long time, but it was worth every second. I you mean, should have bought it. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I got it for free somewhere. <laughs> someone, someone gave it to me for free. He can even listen it at 96 kilohertz. <laughs> exactly. I have the really good sound. <laughs> So we want to start uh, the, before the album, um, before the Nightfall and Imaginations and all these albums were um, composed in your bunkers and you had a special working um, <coughs> back then and that changed with the Night at the Opera. Yeah, you did it 24-7, the oh, Andrea yeah. came into the <laughs> evening the, during the day and then you got together everyone, but now it was time to Try another way of composing songs. Yeah, yeah we moved uh, from the bunker to this place here, and um, we first set up one room here in this area to uh, with our system. We brought in our mixing desk and and the whole recording system, and of course tried to work the same way we did before in the beginning, but. Um, I found it after a while very inconvenient to drive here every day. And it's a long drive. <laughs> it's a long drive. It's but you it's know. Ten kilometers. Yeah, but it, it, <laughs> it has nothing to do with a with a not, not like this. It's more like when when you uh, um, how can I say you you are more flexible when you're young. You like <laughs> to be away from home. When you're old, you like to stay in your house. Let's say something. <laughs> Uh, no, let's say the option came up that computers took over, everything became more dig digital and the home uh, recording situation was available from one day to the other. There was a, a PC system available that you could work with a program like Logic and, and have the possibility to record at home and um, on the other hand there was this um, Line six guitar um, pod. simulator, the pod, and <coughs> you could record a guitar in your house without having this noise of an amplifier. So um, this combination, um, we were always going with a technical development. Whenever you, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I brought you in. Come on, yeah, and, yeah, you yeah. Were, and you were, and uh, you were, you were maybe a little good bit, apprentice. You were. Let's yes. keep it like this. You I were was good. On distance in the beginning, but then you were like uh, 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 uh. <laughs> very curious about the, everything. The apprentice became the master. <laughs> no, the apprentice touched one key and the system crashed. <laughs> <laughs> that was, is a, a fact for some of the recordings when we started with computers. You know, um, when I when I entered the room, sometimes the system crashed. Systems and, didn't like him. Um, he did not believe in it. For the first, you know, <laughs> for the first appearances, but after a while he said, "Yeah, it's better you go away." <laughs> because the only time it happened before was when I was mixing Venom. My whole system broke down. <laughs> and then when Hans entered the room, the same things happened. I went like, mm, yeah. "What's wrong with him?" <laughs> in, in other studios, there's a sign: "You leave your mobiles outside," and here's the sign: "Like leave Hansi outside." Yeah. <laughs> it's my super. Yeah. All the energy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, you got the computer stuff at home. There was no need for you to come over, and you know I liked my isolation here because I had this beautiful place for myself, even though it was not completely finished at that time. Not for long, because I built two systems. I built the system for, that for myself. Later. That was later mm -hmm. with the two PCs. The, the analog. Um, system has been used for the whole opera songwriting. Yeah, so I drove here. Through the then I was then I mixed something up. Um, then we did the songwriting for the opera on the analog system here, and I drove every day. No, here. you did not. You worked at home for really? the computer. Yeah. Okay. And you came. I mean, you can approve that. <laughs> can you came with a stop. mini disc system, yeah. a stereo mixing yeah. of these complicated night at the opera songs, and they're all complicated and very 
wisely woven, you know, all the stuff which is in there makes total sense, but if you have a stereophile and, you know, in a sort of pre-production, it's hard to judge everything. So you transferred that stuff to my analog system and we built in a click which was, you know, never really synchronized to, to that stereo playback or the other way around and I started doing my composings on that. And then you came back after three weeks, you know, we had a, basically before that we always worked on pieces like 8 bars, 16 bars and then you went home, I came the other day, did my vocals and we continued like this and we exchanged papers every day, you know, like small letters, you know, what, what happened and, you know, what was the part supposed to be. Then Andre started composing like, let's say, 32 bars to 64 bars in the beginning and then he delivered the stuff to me via mini disc and I started working here and tried to, you know, come up with whatever, you know, I was able to come up with. And then you got the stuff from me and continued composing. But when you got back the next time, I was working on this tape on another song already. So we delivered the music again to my tape, um, but at a different spot on this tape. So we never had the whole composition at one place. The only one who had it partly was you, and you just had your arrangements, but my vocals as stereophiles. Yeah, true. And the biggest change was that, um, or the result of that uh, system change was that um, we, like Hansi said, the, the pieces we worked on became longer. So, of course, you have a kind of arrangement already there, which was not the case before. Until then, there was only like one new part and um, everything could go from there, but then much more was fixed already. Because Hansi, Hansi of course, took this arrangement serious and tried to bind these parts already. And the feedback of me to his work came much later than before, before the exchange was faster and then it became a little bit, the frequency of exchanging ideas became slower um, and we, we exchanged bigger pieces of work. Um, and in an album, like the music style changed a little bit with the opera and it became more um, uh, complex and um, so it was um, even more difficult for us yeah. to get along with the material and the, the songwriting process was um, probably the most difficult one between yeah. us. Yeah. It was... Uh, um, we had to adjust and we had to find an, a new way to deal with this material because all of a sudden everything was different and it felt different and I, I think especially for you to, to, to catch the feelings was more difficult than before. Um, and yeah, we had many discussions but we, we both couldn't really figure out what was the problems at that time. We saw it later on. I think we, we maybe we experienced it. We, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we found out. Uh, yeah, but anyways, it became we we managed to to um, bring the songwriting on another level. I mean, a song like uh, and then there was silence. Uh, it's not nothing, and and it's a. I think it's still it's. It was a good direction. We tried. It was a, a the vision to improve from an album like Nightfall was there. We really wanted to go the next step. We had that unbelievable concept album in, the, in our bags and, and we tried to go from there and maybe bring Blind Guardian to a more epic way, which was not there before. That really epic way only came up with and then there was silence and we were working on that and trying to do something there. There was more. I believe that we all felt that we were done with the era of, you know, whatever we have done before. And we really felt the need to progress and in, get into other directions. And we were really looking for a more modern sounding direction and to something would would have the quality to compete with uh, Nightfall in every meta, but um, to show different aspects of Blind Guardian. And that is, you know, how we started the songwriting. You also 
apart from the computer stuff, got some new material, some new effects, like, you know, chorus, guitars, you want to try out. And, I mean, this is how we relate to music. I've said that so many times. We don't want to repeat ourselves. And the more development there is, the better it is for us, you know, no matter what the consequences are. But um, from the artistical standpoint, I would still say is uh, A Night at the Opera was or is our most ambitious album. And... Um, it contains a quality which does definitely have the potential to compete with either Imaginations or uh, Nightfall. And what is overseen, uh, I think in many ways, maybe with Imaginations, it is our most aggressive album. Yeah. If we go back to Nightfall, you mentioned before, Andre, that you recorded it with Pro Tools. tools for the first time and of course that is an instrument that you can use to really build layers and it's easy to change parts and how important was that for the actual songwriting when you wanted to take it to an even an, another level? I found out already um, during the recordings with Pro Tools that, uh, that this tool opens new um, options even could be very useful for songwriting. So um, I wanted to work with a digital system because um, when we tried out arrangements, it was pain in the ass because we had to record everything again. If you wanted to change a part, you had to record the whole song again. And we did this se several times on our 16 track. You, f you will probably find tapes and you have three different versions of the song recorded as a demo and, and that was work. You lost a whole day or maybe two only to try out one part. And um, now in the digital system, um, of course it was not helping you to, to have better ideas or to be more creative. Not, not that way, but you could, when it came, came to the point that the song was almost done and you wanted to try out different arrangements, then it was fast and then it was effective. And that I didn't want to miss anymore and I only made use of this. That's why it was perfect for me to have it in a system, everything, and um, to copy Hansi's vocals into the system, bring everything together, cut my parts and see which arrangement could work best for the song in the end. That was the most positive effect I could see in that system. So basically the development into this direction would maybe not have been possible if it wasn't for working with Pro Tools or what do you think? It, for, for the arrangements I see yes we could um, a song like and then there was silence is so complex from the arrangement like you need to to keep the interest and the dynamic over more than 12 minutes and I think without trying this out in a in a digital system you would have no chance to also in the production it would have been impossible there's no chance you know in, in both words impossible there's what we have is a complexity and a depth and um, this depth is significant in every single part and we have a bunch of parts yeah well there was even more parts composed for that song what you hear in the end in the final version is not what we had we had like at least 40% more material for that song. And we silence. Were, for silence. Yeah. And we were playing around with these parts. We exchanged parts um, and we always had this, uh, this pool of other ideas and it was like a, a puzzle and we checked out which puzzle pieces would be the best to have the whole picture in the end. Nightfall was supposed to be the first album to be recorded here, which eventually you didn't manage to complete as it was a construction construction site, but for opera, not, now was the time. So so you actually built the studio, and you had idea. Now let's finish it here, but you experienced some problems. It was still a learning process. Yeah, it was a learning process. The stage was set up for the album production. Everything was nice here. We had a. It looked nice. We had a <laughs> studio designer here first. You know, and he was supposed to, to build in a, a real mixing room that should have been the core and everything else should have been built around that. But that was too expensive, we could not afford that. 
and we thought it was not necessary because regular rooms would do the trick. So we built everything by ourselves and with the help of some of our friends. We progressed well. Uh, we had some discussions with you about the setups, but more or less you didn't have any idea what we were doing here. So we, <laughs> it we was taken by surprise. <laughs> we set up the thing. Uh, production was supposed to start. We had our stuff together. We may talk about Tom's drum arrangements later on. Um, but everything was set up and it was obvious we would start the production the next day. You came by and you saw the room and you were like, okay, that will be adventurous again. But at least the rooms are there. Um, we built up everything. You had still some maintenance work to do because we did not have the uh, wires and all the there was cables. No cabling in, in the studio. No cabling at no. all. And there, was, there were no holes going through the walls to put the cables <laughs> through as well. Yeah, yeah no, that's true. <laughs> yeah, well, it just got overseen. That we might need some cables. There was power. <laughs> There was energy, there was water. Yes. <laughs> we were thinking wireless. We were <laughs> fine at all time. We were fine at all time. So that needed to be fixed first. And, uh, the, the machines needed to be connected because we have had that very nice uh, artist recording system. We were also relying on your system, which mm. needed to be connected. That all had to be set up. So this was done. And then the next thing we figured was that the drums were not good enough, as far as I remember. Or um, that the arrangements Tom has come up with did not really yeah. satisfy our needs for, for the album. It's, it's, uh, I think that what we always try to be between any production, but you know, especially in this one, we try to learn from the things that happened during Nightfall. And one of the things was, you know, that I said, look, we need to give Tom at least the chance to, you know, have a proper playback to play to. You know, and and so we, I, the first thing was like putting it all together, yes. and there was a lot of. Now it gets a little bit technical, where it's like you know, un unsynchronicity between the parts that were like he, he put it just not synchronized onto his uh, analog tape, then back to him. So I had like to, to make up an arrangement with separate tracks for for the whole album. It took like forever because I had to bring in you know basically bounce over all the analog stuff. Re not rearrange it in like a, a, a artistic way, but technically, you know, to put it in the in the right spot, and then you know, and, and put together so we had like a, a playback for Tolman to actually play the song through, and you know, because th they worked like that, I think that Tolman was also supposed to do some work, so he had done work, but it was only like some spots. And whenever he didn't have an idea, it was like, we do percussion. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's true. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it, you know this, this is, it, that was just his idea. And of course, you know, that, that can be done and everything. But so it was very fragmented. And, you know, at some point I just said, look, we, we need to sit down and figure out, you know, what, what the drum arrangement might be. And, you know, as we have, start, have done it before, uh, uh, with Nightfall on the real set and I know that he would he, he would not be able to do it any different he would still like hit the hit, hit it so hard that the heads would go and we would have to re you know uh, re uh, rebuild the drum kit basically so I said no let's try to do it with a MIDI drum you know that was the idea either program it and you know come up with the arrangements or you know that's was then Tolman was saying ah then let's get a MIDI drum and you know like Tolman was was or still is, you know, he went to Hansi and said, ah, I just saw this really great MIDI drum kit, you know, uh, uh, that I want to get, and it's five and a half thousand marks, <laughs> and Hansi went like, hmm, what? <laughs> but, you know, it, 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 it was, it, at that time you had like these hard pads kind of thing at Simmons, you know, where you really, you know, actually can hurt your angles, or they had, they just came out with what's called a mesh head. Which is like a you know basically it feels like a drum head to play on, but it's not. It's just a you know basically like a, a t-shirt kind of thing or whatever. So th that's what he wanted to get. So we drove down to Cologne, got this thing here, and set it up, and hooked it up you know to, through MIDI. So we had all the sounds and blah blah, and started working on the stuff. But as he is so physical, he could not hold back. You know, normally you're supposed to play lightly and lay out the, the ideas, but he was like, he was banging this thing. You know, he was like hitting so hard that actually this things broke. And, you know, <laughs> we were sitting there going like, please, please hold back. 
and it, you know that that took him a while to like you know get a little bit used to it, and then we we just went for the ideas, and it it, it was actually he had a lot of you know great ideas. But as he, you know, he, 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 he's always playing out of his stomach, so to speak. You know, he, he, he doesn't, it's not planned. He plays something, and of course, now when you're in the MIDI world, you know, it's like all the triggers, whatever, you just go like, hmm, okay. And he played the idea and said, oh, this is great. But, you know, of course, even so, it might not have been uh, played great. In, in that instance, I went like, and I went, so I just rearranged it so it, it would present his idea, you know, and later on when we went in and, and actually were, were trying to, to play it, it seemed to him that these ideas didn't come from him, which is actually not true. It's all his ideas. I just kept them and, you know, made them listenable for him. And, and this was like, you know, one of the things later on when we recorded the drums where he went like, we had a hard time replaying the stuff that he invented, basically. But, you know, of course, you know, it takes what it takes. And but it the takes. result is stunning. Yeah, it, it, I, mean, it, I, I think you know. the uh, drum arrangements as well as the performance on the album yeah. is up to date, his best performance. Yeah. Mm -hmm.